early history Julius sees across the sea To this island off the northern coast of France Then some other Romans came To treat us just the same And they stayed a little longer just by chance They came, they saw, they conquered everything that they could see Till they reached the river Humber, that noble estuary But they burned their boats behind them, not thinking it could be That the ancient Britons hadn't built a bridge Will they ever bridge the Humber? Will they ever span it all? Is it always an exception to the rule? Is it such a privilege not to have a Humber Bridge and to have to keep on going round by goal? In the last episode, we got as far as the Humber Estuary, where we stopped on the south side for breakfast with a great view of the bridge. Officially opened by Her Majesty the Queen on the 17th of July 1981, the bridge is a 1.4 mile long single span suspension bridge, which opened to traffic on the 24th of June 81. When it opened, the bridge was the longest of its type in the world. This was not surpassed until 1998 and remains the longest single span suspension bridge in the UK. Prior to the bridge, the only way of crossing the Humber was by ferry. The bridge saves a 1 hour 65 mile drive around, well worth the £1.50 toll, but we didn't pay anything because motorcycles are free. The bridge marks the boundary between the East Riding of Yorkshire and North Lincolnshire. Its exposed position means it can be seen for miles around and is now a Grade 1 listed building. It took 8 years to build the Humber Bridge, during which time workers endured some of the UK's worst weather conditions. At times, over a thousand people worked on the bridge at once. On average, there are 33,000 crossings per day. Nearly a quarter of a billion vehicles have crossed since 1981. It's still the longest single-span suspension bridge in the world that can be crossed on foot or by cycle. The road deck has an aerodynamic design, like an upside-down aircraft wing. This keeps the deck stable during high winds. It's 30 metres above the high water level to enable the passage of ships beneath. There is enough wire used in the bridge to go around the moon more than six times. In a thousand years or more, there arrived on England's shore a noble duke who came from Normandy. Duke William was his name. And conqueror he became For he conquered all the land that he could see But one day he came up north And there to his surprise As he reached the river Humber He was made to realize That while Romans could build straighter roads And walls of every size They never tried to build a Humber bridge Ever bridge the Humber? Will they ever span it all? Is it always an exception to the rule? Is it such a privilege not to have a Humber bridge and to have to keep on going round by goo? In the English Civil War, when they fought on Marston Moor And the Royalists were scattered far and wide They disturbed the peaceful slumber Of the quiet river Humber But they knew the Tull was not a place to hide For the city favoured Cromwell And there they could not stay They headed for the river to cross without delay But on reaching Hessel for sure They found to their dismay No one had ever built a Humber Bridge Will they ever bridge the Humber? Will they ever span it all? Is it always an exception to the rule? 
Is it such a privilege not to have a humble bridge and to have to keep on going round by gold? The year of 1966 found Harold Wilson in a fix. Oh, with his overall majority down to two. He just couldn't face rejection at the Hull North by election. Barbara Castle came to see what she could do. There is one thing I can promise, she assured us on that day. You'll get your Humber Bridge and there won't be much delay. But she forgot to mention that a squeeze was on the way. And still we're waiting for a Humber Bridge. Will they ever bridge the Humber? Will they ever span it? Or is it always an exception to the rule? Is it such a privilege not to have a humble bridge and to have to keep on going round by good? Now they've built across the Severn, they've built across the Tay, and they've even spanned the mighty Firth of Forth. But an increase on this number with a bridge across the Humber appears to be more trouble than it's worth. Gas may flow in from the ocean, oil may spurt out from the sea. We could join the common market, or something else may be. Then in Whitehall and in Westminster, perhaps they'll start to see that at last we really need a Humber Bridge. Will they ever bridge the Humber? Ever span it or is it always an exception to the rule? Is it such a privilege not to have a humble bridge and to have to keep on going round by goo? So there it is out there, but do, do you remember it goes all sandy in the middle and you can't I know, yeah, yeah. actually well, get very yeah, we'll, far? We'll, but we'll see, we'll see. But there's I a gate anyway, can. there's a gate, so... Oh, is it gated? Oh, yeah. Please don't park in front of the gate. Spurn Point is one of the most striking features of Britain's coastline, stretching for three and a half miles across the Humber estuary and only 50 metres wide in places. It used to be a spit and was accessible by car, but a storm in 2013 made the road down to the end of the spurn impassable for all but off-road vehicles. It's become a narrow tidal island. Now visitors have a three mile trek from the car park and can only go at low tide. More importantly, it has had an effect on vital services based on the end of the peninsula. The loss of the road means that the lifeboat station, where the RNLI has its only full-time crew in the UK, is now isolated. Spurn is made up of a series of sand and shingle banks held together by marin grass and sea buckthorn. There are a series of sea defences built by the Victorians which were maintained by the Ministry of Defence until they sold Spurn to the Yorkshire Wildlife Trust in the 1950s. Spurn's environment is very fragile and is open to the ravages of the North Sea. It is an important wildlife haven for migrant birds, lizards, roe deer and numerous species of insects and fossil hunting is popular with an abundance of fossils to be found amongst the pebbles on the beach.
there all day protecting the chemical plant or are they just sat up here for their lunch well i'm not sure if they're just a normal constabulary or they're something like the uh, nuclear constabulary you know what i mean yeah they're like like port police and stuff like that and yeah if they're port police or nuclear constabulary specific for the industry that's around here then yeah they probably do have to um, have a visibility around here, don't they? Protecting what from whom? What a fantastic road. Yeah. There. Is that what it was? Yeah. I didn't really notice. <laughs> yeah. Just regain grip as it were. Just, just I just thought something it. weird would happen, but yeah, yeah. wasn't quite yeah. sure what. I'm sure you were avoiding a, a pothole or something. No, there was a bit of a line of wet mud oh. which we hit and it just kind of squidged on it, as it were, you know. CC front. Nice parry gates to welcome us, isn't it? Couple of bikers. Yeah. This is all that remains of Withensee Pier. It was once 400 yards long. Work began in 1875 and by August 1877 the pier was completed, having cost £12,000 and the life of a 17-year-old worker who was crushed by a crane. This only marked the beginning of the pier's short and tragic existence. Only two years after completion, on the 28th of October 1880, a great storm hit the town. The vessel Jabez was torn to pieces and instantly sunk when it struck the end of the pier taking the lives of all souls on board. During the same storm, the coal barge saffron punched the 200-foot hole through the middle of the pier. In 1888, an unnamed ship struck the pier. In 1890, it was hit by the fishing boat, Genesta, destroying more than half the pier. In 1893, it was struck by the Grimsby-bound Henry Parr. The pier supports were knocked down span after span until there was only 18 yards remaining of the once grand pier. What was left of the pier was deemed unsafe and the last remains of the pier were removed, leaving only two support legs on the beach. The pier towers were fully restored in 2019 and are now owned and operated by the Wivensee Pier and Promenade Association. They were open to the public for the first time in many years in June 2020. Recently, stories have emerged suggesting there are tunnels stretching under Withensea that surface at the base of the entrance facade. This seems like a good place to end this episode. Thank you for staying until the end. Don't forget to like, leave a comment and subscribe. See you next Friday for another exciting coast episode.